In today's Yahoo Finance Playbook, we're taking a close look at the biotech sector and opportunities outside of GLP-1s. Joining us now, Salvin Richter, lead analyst for the U.S. biotechnology sector at Goldman Sachs within Global Investment Research. Salvin, thanks for being here. Thanks for coming in. So I want to start sort of big picture because we are on a day here where we're seeing this very dramatic sell-off across assets. And I just wonder kind of how you think about biotech as strategically as part of a portfolio at a time like this? Well, I think when you look at healthcare, you tend to want to gravitate towards the more defensive sectors in a period like this. Within biotech, there are defensive aspects, but they're non-defensive aspects. So with regard to rates, you know, obviously a positive for the sector if we start to see a rate cut, but if you're in a recessionary environment, then you know you can kind of pass through that situation and people will determine where they're going to allocate for, for growth and, and more of a defensive play, which will probably be these larger cap, more quality oriented names. And which among those names, Salvin, in your coverage universe right now, where do you see the opportunity? So Amgen's one, they're reporting earnings this week um, that we're focused on, and, and there um, they do have a next generation glip angle um, but they or for obesity, but they also have a slew of pipeline products of a, that have come out via internal R&D and, um, and then M&A. And so we're looking at them from an earnings execution standpoint and then the ability to kind of own in different verticals within cancer, within autoimmune disease, um, and they also are um, basically leveraging the AI side of, of the world with regard to kind of bringing it in-house and mixing it with genetic medicine. Um, and then we, Vertex and Regeneron are two others we should highlight, really strong R&D first execution stories. And with Vertex, they're looking at um, not only furthering their cystic fibrosis monopoly essentially, but also bringing in a non-opioid pain version and then going further into rare diseases. Vertex um, is looking to build a cancer vertical and also looking to go into kind of innovative spaces in autoimmune disorders and others. So I, I think it's much more about where do you see innovation and sustainable growth and a kind of a first in class outlook, first in class, best in class outlook. And it, it sounds like, are you also looking at the biotechs that are not sort of, I mean, even though Vertex has that dominant product in cystic fibrosis, they have some other others in the pipeline you just mentioned. Are you sort of focusing also on some diversified plays, right, that aren't just sort of betting the farm on one particular um, treatment area. Exactly. I mean, I think Vertex has done extremely well being a focused player, but the idea of diversification is, is key, right? As you think about growth levers as you've penetrated a market. So they do have, they've been acquiring and innovating to kind of create that diversification. diversification. So has Amgen to that point. And, um, and now we're seeing Regeneron have to do it. So we've seen this with the large biopharmas or even just large pharmas when they get to a point where they're too concentrated, they do have to work on diversification here. Salvin, so, I'm curious, you know, one kind of mega trend, no surprise, we talk a lot about on the show is AI. Mm -hmm. How are the companies in your coverage universe leveraging that technology? And how do you see it sort of just reshaping the biotech sector? I think it's gonna reshape the biotech sector um, in terms of being a tool that, that everyone brings in. And now it's already, it already exists as computational biology. So as we think of, it's, it's more of a, um, I would say a gradual, um, you know, stepwise function towards kind of maybe greater integration here. And so some companies, some large companies like Amgen have gone out and been acquiring tools that they're bringing in house to, you know, quicken development, lower time to um, market, therefore lower costs, but also go after undruggable targets, right? And so there's work on that front that's being done. Um, and so you've seen several large pharmas come in that way and, and then you're seeing this emergence of a group that are calling themselves tech bio and they really are tech companies and drug companies that have kind of merged and culturally they are interesting because they're different from models we've seen and working to create kind of next generation drugs here and, and we'll see. I think some will succeed, some won't, but we're in early innings here. Great, Salveen, thank you so much for joining the show today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.